bucket lists. It may involve jumping from an airplane, driving a race car, or riding a bull for eight seconds. But to a deer hunter, a bucket list might contain that pope and young buck making an amazing shot or hunting in an unbelievable location. What's on your bucket list? You know, I've been hunting for more than 40 years and what keeps me going is that there's things that I still want to do. There's things that I still get excited about. So you think you've done it all as a deer hunter? Come on, there's got to be something you want to experience yet. This is Land of Whitetail TV. You gotta love the hunt for Bigfoot. Extraterrestrials, those UFOs, and different subspecies of whitetails. Hey, 75 years ago, researchers discovered another subspecies of whitetails. The Sierra del Carmen Mountains were the location in Texas, and they called it the Carmen Mountain Whitetail. That is a hunt I would love to do. It's a bucket list hunt. One of those hunts you add onto your list of things that you want to do, you know, before you kick the bucket. I think everybody's got a bucket list. I know hunters do. And it's usually got to do with things that they want to experience before they get too old to do it. And when you get to be my age, you start thinking about that a little bit. Uh, do you want to do that goat hunt? Do you want to do that sheep hunt? Some of those very physical hunts that you might not be able to do 10 years from now. I've got several of those such hunts. I want to shoot all of the upland game birds in North America um, while I can still follow my Britneys around. But there's also some whitetail hunts that I want. One of them, top of my bucket list, Carmen Mountain Whitetails. I think the reason that the Carmen Mountain Whitetails are my bucket list is because they're very unique. They only inhabit a very small region in part of Texas and Mexico. So you have to go to a very specific region to hunt them. And then it's the hunt itself. This is some rugged terrain. These deer know how to use that terrain. It's a very challenging hunt. The deer itself is also very unique. They're very small subspecies of the whitetail. I mean, you're looking at a deer that only weighs you know, a mature buck, maybe 100, 110 pounds, and antlers, not so much. 100 inches of horn, that's a good Carmen Mountain Whitetail. Different subspecies of deer, including the whitetails, are generally named for where they live. The Northland Whitetail, the Northwest Whitetail, the Southeastern Whitetail, the Dakota subspecies of whitetail, kind of one of my favorites. They all have unique landscapes. And that's, to me, that's what makes that hunt special. Going to these different locations, hunting new environments, and finding out the challenges of hunting deer in these areas. Because each environment is different. For example, the coos deer down in the southwestern United States and in New Mexico, they live in a desert environment. It's a totally different hunt than hunting the northeastern deer up in the New England states and into the southern reaches of Canada up there. Those deer, they live a different lifestyle. They browse on different foods and they find different escape cover. So for me, it's not the bucket list, just checking them off with my Sharpie, no. For me, it's about going to these different environments, these different landscapes, these different regions of the country and hunting deer and seeing how these deer exist. And of course, you also get the benefit of sharing some of that knowledge that you have and what other hunters share with you from those areas. And that all makes you a better hunter. So this is a big whitetail bucket list hunt for me. And when I got the call from Linda Powell from Mossberg and said, hey, do you want to go on a Carmen Mountain whitetail hunt? Well, everything just fell in place at that point. I was going to get to hunt my bucket list deer. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gunmaker. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. 
and buy scent killer gold with hunt dry plus technology apply it dry it and go hunt coming up next the bucket list trip that is harder than imagined Having a bucket list usually involves a crazy idea you've thought about for years or involves the chance to do something you've always wanted to do. Checklists, you know the bucket list, they're fine if you're going grocery shopping and some of you like to grocery shop for whitetails. Me, it's all about visiting different parts of the country, different parts of North America where these varying subspecies live. If I do have a bucket list anymore, quite honestly, it's going out and taking a moose with a bow and taking an elk with a bow. You know, those are two animals that I would really enjoy chasing, but I just don't enjoy chasing them as much as whitetails. Gordy Cron's list contains hunting for Carmen Mountain Whitetail in the rugged area of Southwest Texas. He's always wanted to do it. And as for a crazy idea, only if you can handle the rough country. Uh, this is a big bucket list deer for me. It's a, it's a rare deer, it's a unique deer. It inhabits some great terrain. It's spot and stock hunting on steroids. This is the kind of hunt I relish. This is why this is a bucket list deer for me. What is, what is really unique about these little Carmen deer? Obviously, if a guy's wanting to kill 200 inch whitetail, this is not the deer you're looking for. This is very much a spot and stock up in the mountains. We're, not, we're less than 20 miles from the Rio Grande River. Uh, these little deer, are, they, their home ground is in Mexico, and they derive their name from the Sierra del Carmen Mountains in old Mexico. Uh, they only come up into Texas 20, 30 miles in different areas. Uh, they're, they're very, very small little deer, very unique little deer. If a guy wants a really neat hunting experience, similar to coos deer hunting, this is a deer for you. The Patriot really truly is a classic, classic Western style hunting rifle. We've done a few things to take the weight off. The barrel's fluted. The bolt is also fluted, so that trims it down. Uh, and again, perfect calibers for the Western style hunting. Classics like 308, 270, 30 out six, but also some of the magnums for that longer range shooting. Seven millimeter rim mag, 300 wind mag. And coming soon, we're gonna have the new 6.5 Creedmoor, ideal for uh, big game hunting. This was only a three day hunt, so when you start a three-day hunt, it seems like you've got a lot of time, but that time can go by quickly. And the first day we got out and we, we did a lot of driving around just to really look the ranch over, and we didn't see a lot of deer. We just walked in to take a look at the waterfall here, and we jumped a couple of um, whitetail does, Carmel Mountain whitetail does, right out of the little flat there. It must have been bedded down. Okay, so we really didn't get in on anything the first day. Um, second day comes around, now we're looking we got two days left, and we do what you typically do on a Texas hunt. You spend some time in the truck, you get up high, you get out and you glass and you glass and you glass. Uh, so we drove out, got up on a high place, and just started doing our glassing. I mean, it was perfect morning, beautiful light, kind of cool, um, just a perfect morning for doing some optics work. And, we probably weren't up there, I don't know, half an hour. All of a sudden, off to our right, Steve taps my shoulder, buck, buck. And we're looking over, and sure enough, there was a buck standing over in the draw. And I could see it was a buck right away, but I couldn't really see you know, what kind of character he had, what kind of antlers he had. But then he stepped up and uh, st stood broadside, basically, on the hillside. I mean, when you see a mature deer, you know, it just grabs your attention. You know it's a mature buck when you see it. And he was out there on the next ridge over, several hundred yards away. We got the spotting scope on him, and we worked him over for a long time, you know, trying to grow some inches on him. He was a decent deer. He was a, a mature deer, but he was four on one side and three on the other. We thought, you know, we've still got another day and a half to hunt, and another morning, I think, if we had to. We decided to back off that deer. We drove around for the rest of the day. We saw a couple other bucks, but, you know, I'm thinking tomorrow that four by three is gonna look a little bit better. Having a bucket list usually involves a crazy idea you've thought about for years. Gordy Cron's list contains hunting for Carmen Mountain Whitetail in the rugged area of Southwest Texas. All right, now we're at the last morning of the hunt. You know, this is where you reach that part of the hunt, you know, where do you change your expectations? Uh, do you settle for a smaller deer? Uh, 
all those things have to weigh into the equation. And for me, like I've mentioned, it's more about the experience of hunting these deer and hunting this terrain. I didn't come here to shoot a record book buck. I came here to shoot a mature deer. You know, I, I wanted the challenge of shooting a mature deer, but I had decided at this point, and Steve and I had discussed it, that we'd go back to our little honey hole in the morning, and if we got a chance at that three by four, and it was a good chance, yeah, we would not hesitate. We'd go after him. Uh, we got up there, started glass, and we picked up that, that three by four right away. And he was just like that other guy. He was right in the same place where we'd seen him uh, the morning before. And the thing about it was we actually had a plan now because after we saw him the morning before, when we drove out on the ranch road, Steve was looking up these draws and he said, you know, if we were to go after that deer, I think we'd work our way through this wash, try to get around him, try to get some elevation, get up above him and try to get in within, you know, 200 yards, 300 yards, and, and we might just be able to pull this off. So we, we kind of had a built-in plan, so that's what we did. We drove around to the other side, got down below him, parked the truck, and there was just this really nice wash where we could walk in around the base of the mountain and do it quietly, because once again, there was absolutely not a whisper of wind. So we really just had to just take our time, and that's what Steve said. The word of the day is patience. We just need to stay patient. Uh, so we worked around the base of the hill, and then when we got to where we thought we, we could get up above them, we just started working our way up the hill, and it was a, it was a pretty nasty climb. We just took our time until we just got up to the, the rim of the hill, and that's when we saw the doe, and we knew at that point we were in pretty good position. We still needed to get up over the rise so that we could get down in the sticks and make the shot, but at this point, we were just a little over 200 yards away, so if we could scoot ahead 20 yards and I could get on the sticks, we'd have that 200 yard shot. But mind you, we hadn't seen the buck yet. We assumed he was there in that brush right next to the doe. And it, you know, it's a good assumption because she wasn't going anywhere. Steve and I, neither of us are young men anymore, but we did the old coyote crawl and, and got into position. And I got up on the sticks. And once I got up on the sticks and I, I zeroed in on that doe, I felt like, okay, I'm rock solid. Um, we've got a good opportunity to kill this buck here. He goes, there's a buck, there's a buck. And he says, right above the doe. So I just look up and, I mean, I don't know how he went from here to here, but all of a sudden he's just standing there and he's standing just broadside. And, and uh, I get up on him, I get up on the sticks and he moves a little bit, he's walking away and then he stops again. And uh, perfect opportunity, right at 200 yards. I was on a solid rest. And, I mean, that's really important out here. When I tugged the trigger, I felt pretty confident that I was gonna make the shot. And I heard, I heard that bullet smack flesh and you know, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I saw him tumbling down the hill and I, I knew I had my Carmen Mountain Whitetail and I, I was pretty pumped. You know, if I ever get to the point where I'm not excited in a situation like this, I, I would just quit honey. Um, and on top of it, this is really a bucket list um, animal for me. I don't know that I'll ever get back out here to shoot another one. Um, I've dreamed about shooting a Carmen Mountain Whitetail for years. I've been out here hunting mule deer and Audad, and I've seen them, and I've always wanted to experience this. So, you know, a bucket list buck for me. And yeah, if I ever lose the thrill of the hunt or the pursuit, as long as I'm physically able to do it, I'll be climbing mountains like this. I'll be bouncing around in an old red truck and I'll be enjoying every second of it. I got him. There you go, I see him down there. Boy, he's a big body deer. Yeah. When I first spotted that buck laying in a heap down there, you know, I, I couldn't have been more thrilled. And when we went down there and started looking him over, I got just more and more thrilled because he was a very mature buck. I'd made a great shot on him. Um, he had really nice mass and character to his antlers, and he was basically exactly what I thought we were going after. I mean, we looked him over um, really well in the spotting scope, and we knew exactly what we were going after, and, and he didn't disappoint. I think when it finally just really hit home for me um, that I had finally killed a Carmel Mountain Whitetail was when I was filling out my tag and attaching it to the antlers. 
Okay, now we're done. We just killed uh, a Carmel Mountain Whitetail. We got him in the back of the truck. This, this just really happened. To have it wrapped up now, a feeling of relief, feeling of accomplishment, a feeling of joy, all those emotions right there when I signed the tag. Coming up next, getting deer to come to you may not be as difficult as you think. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. When it comes to laying out a property, we all want quick, easy solutions to things. Okay, what is the best food plot? What seed should I be planting on my property? How should I lay out my property? Well, what method did you use so I can go ahead and apply it to my ground? It, it's for those of us who are serious and have a burning desire to improve our property, it's a copycat league just like football. We wanna figure out what works for other people and replicate it on our place. There's a key problem with this and that is every single property is different. Every region is different. Every neighboring property is different. How much pressure do they have? What's the topography like? What's the mix of open ground to timber? Is it an egg region? Is it a heavily forested region? Cookie cutters just don't work. They don't because every single property is different. So what we need to do, our job as managers, is to get out there and learn our ground. We have all sorts of tools at our, at our disposal. You know, there's hinge cutting. Just in hinge cutting, you can create blockades, you can create bedding areas, you can create edge feathering. You know, those are good things, okay? But that's not the only way to skin a cat. We can also plant trees. We can plant uh, native grass mixes to add cover. There, there's our cover and bedding right there. You know, we can go ahead and use fencing if we want to, to go ahead and blockade deer. Th there's a ton of different tools out there at our disposal, and that's what we want to do as managers. We want to learn what all can we do. Okay, then we get out to our ground, we tear it apart. How are the deer using it? How can we tweak this property a little bit to make it so that we have high odds, low impact stand sites, make it so the deer don't realize we're there. What you do is you analyze the property and then you look at the toolbox. You know, do I want to use edge feather? Do I want to create a kill plot? Do I want to create a blockade? No. Do I want to create screening? Where do I want the screening to be? How can I set up my mock scrapes so that I waste as much time with those bucks as possible because every second they waste on my ground they're not over on the neighbors okay and you know what they jump the fence that neighbor has every right in the world to shoot that deer and all we should do is congratulate them for it no matter how much it might sting because they have every right to do that just like we have every right on our property to do what we can to improve the hunting but do not look for that magic bullet that that magic habitat improvement plan. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and take sidewalks and clover snake trails and hinge cut bedding areas and I'm gonna create a racetrack around my property and the bucks are gonna jump on that racetrack and they're gonna go round and round and round and round and round in circles all day long and I'm gonna kick the heck out of them. No, that's not gonna happen, okay? You have to match the improvements to your ground. You do that and you are so much further ahead. You know, anybody who's really followed my work, you realize I, I really don't talk a heck of a lot about products, frankly, because you know, I think that our best, our best products is right, are right up here. Now, that said, if you do want to spend just a little bit of money, nothing, nothing will help stack the odds in your favor much more than mock scrapes. I mean, here it is the middle of summer. Look at this. You know, that's been work fresh. 
Now, what, what we've done here is we've turned this into a social hub, a year-round scrape location. The advantages to that are pretty darn significant. I mean, heck, the more we all know, the more time deer spend on our properties, the better our odds are of either killing them ourselves or giving them another year trying to grow into this. You know, which, uh, whichever is the case, this little baby right here helps. And the way it helps is you can help create these social year-round hubs of deer activity that when deer come through this area they're going to come right over here and they're going to stop and they're going to check it out that's not only wasting time for those deer on our ground which is key but at the same time we do this right we can have that buck working this while we're sitting right there during deer season he's focusing all his attention away from us at a known yardage giving us a good shot angle for us to have all day to go up there and make that shot. That is what mock scrapes can do for you. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and at deerandeerhunting.com. <laughs> <laughs>